Holloway, which is our next game. And yeah, it's look, it's not going to be an easy one because Hull are, Hull have been good uh, under Rashinia. They lost on opening day to Norwich away, and they were they deservedly lost. But even if it was in the ninetieth minute, they deservedly lost. They beat Sheffield Wednesday four uh, two, which you could catch them at a good time. But they then they beat Blackburn away two one as well. But Blackburn were down to ten men. So this is especially at 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 away at Hull on a Friday night as well. Uh, not going to be an easy game. No, I mean, like you said, they're on six points right now. It's a decent start to the season. I think Sheffield Wednesday have had, well, obviously zero points out of six and uh, out of nine. Uh, not a great start to the season. I think everyone kind of expected that. So that win, I'm not saying, I'm not taking anything away from Hull, but um, most, well, all the teams have beaten them so far. Um, Blackburn, like you said, they went down to 10 men, but Hull aren't a bad team at all. And the way we're playing right now, it's definitely not going to be easy. Having said that, our, well, we've only played one away game, but we did win that. Home atmosphere slash form hasn't been amazing, I think, at, at all. But um, I think, yeah, we could get a result out of it, but it's, I don't know. I don't know. It's going to be interesting. No, and Hull have some really good players who are on form. Um, Ozan Tufan got just a hat-trick. Only a hat trick against uh, Sheffield Wednesday, so you know nothing, nothing much there. Um, and then Aaron Connolly comes um, comes off the bench for Hull with twenty five minutes to go, scores a double to win them the game at Blackburn. So uh, <laughs> look, it's 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 not going to be an easy game at all. And um, honestly, I'm not very confident going into this. I think they have, I think I'll have superior quality, especially. Especially in midfield, uh, with Seri, uh, with Tufan, with Slater, with Xavier Simmons, um, they are just a better team than us. I think that I think you have who, to say that. Who would you want in the starting lineup for? Well, for us, for us, um, stick with Max, obviously. Tanner right back, uh, Viner. You'd have to put Cal Naismith in at centre back, and. Uh, you'd put <laughs> who'd I put at left back? That's a very good question. Um, we'll talk about that actually. Who would you put at left back to start? Campering or Hayden Roberts? I, I thought last game. I think it was a good chance for Hayden Roberts. I feel like a bit more of like technicality, ability on the ball. I thought when he came on, he he was he showed a bit more like intensity and. Uh, and a bit more like quality on on the ball. I think Pring was still really good when he played. He made a couple of good challenges, but I think Roberts right now has. I feel like he's the kind of player that will get those attacking chances. And I think what I wanted last game and what I still want for this game is to see Anis and um, Roberts on the left hand side and see how that work for like a decent majority of the game and see if we can create some chances from that. So personally, I'd see Roberts starting. And then maybe pring towards the end of the game if we somehow are in a winning position or trying to hold on to a point um, to see out the game. But yeah, personally, Roberts. But yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd stick. No, I'd put uh, Hayden Robertson as well. Just, just, just give him 75, 80 minutes. And as you say, if we are somewhat miraculously winning at Hull, um, just put, just put Campering in, um, and just to see the game out. And in midfield, I'd put Matthew James, um, Joe Williams, Jason Knight, and honestly, I would have put I would have stuck Cal Naismith in there ahead <laughs> of Joe Williams, but well, Rob same. I was going to say that as well. <laughs> well, 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 we kind of we've, we've been we in that situation. Um, yeah, would you agree, Knight, Williams, James? Yeah, I didn't think. Joe really showed much against Birmingham. I couldn't, he didn't really like bring anything to the midfield. Um, and neither Knight as well. I think, um, he I think against Millwall, he created one or two chances. I remember one where he, he went through the middle and created intact, but fine, kind of feels like they were a bit 
like ghosts in the game. Nothing March didn't really notice them creating anything. But yeah, you can't, we kind of have to stick with them. I don't know. I don't see who else we'd put in there. I mean, like right back, you said Tanner, uh, Ross McCrory with this bacterial infection. It's really an unknown. Nigel Pearson said that he might have to have surgery. So that P- could put P- Pearson it up is to... said, no, Pearson, when he first got it in pre season, he said, um, uh, oh, it'll probably be a couple of weeks. A couple of weeks have passed. Then another couple of weeks have passed. Oh, probably be a couple of months. I'm like, what? What? What are you? What are you talking? Just, just tell the truth. Uh, ridiculous. Um. Anyway, uh, up top. Yeah, so many, so many options. Um... So many <laughs> wonderful options to put. <laughs> I think. Oh God. Um. I I I put Naki up front. I don't yeah. really want to see Sambo up there again. Um, and then because of the Roberts at left back, I, I want to have Anis there on the left wing, which I wanted for Birmingham as well. I want to see that for like 60 minutes of the game. I want I, I kind of want to see how that plays out, if we can do something just like the Oxford game. But yeah, Naki up front. And then for the right hand side, I'm, I think Cornet can sit on the bench for this, this for this one. And Thank God. Like, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think both of them have... I think Snikes always has a decent game. Doesn't create too much. But I think he's a bit more he's more solid than Cornick. So yeah, I have him start as well. What about you? What's your uh, front co- three? Yeah, I'd agree with Naki up top. Um I don't think Sam Bell deserves to be dropped. So uh because let's be honest, he was starved of anything. He, but we weren't playing to his strengths mm. against Birmingham. We put we put him against two massive centre backs and went try and win the ball in the air you're not going to win the ball in the air um so i'd put him on the left uh against whoever their right back is louis call or cyrus christie uh and try and force something down their right hand side uh on the right for us i'd put mark sykes um harry cornick was quite honestly dreadful uh against birmingham he was really bad and um yeah i don't think he deserves to start again but if he doesn't start, we're not going to score any goals because we don't have his long throw-ins. Um, <laughs> because supposedly that's the only way we can actually score now uh, from his long throw. Um, yeah, like you said in your in your video, no open play goals. Yeah, in the championship season. So, and I ha- I haven't checked, but I think we're the only team after three games to not score a goal from open play. I think. Because uh, Middlesbrough scored one goal so far, but they uh, scored a goal from open play. And Huddersfield with two has scored one from open play. So I think we're the only team in the championship. So here's our trophy. Um, mm-hmm. We're the only team after three games not to score a goal from open play this season, which is absolutely disgusting. It is. It is, yeah. that, is, that, is that is because with the options we have up front and. Well, we don't have much creativity in the middle, but the options we have up front, that is, that is stupid. That, is, that shouldn't be on. And it, and it took us nearly the whole season to score a goal from outside the box. Um, well, which that's, is that's, that's I a don't, different story. Yeah, yeah, no, no. Just going to, I don't think that will happen at all this season. Um, I can't mm. see that happening. And I think it was still from open play, I think, well, we'll get on to our predictions in a minute, but I don't think, I don't think it's going to happen. Um, yeah, uh, uh, you, I've kind of built it, built it up with my negativity, and um, I'm going to say um, we're we're not going to win, let alone get anything at uh, at the is it the MKM now the the whole whole city um, stadium MKM KCOM whatever it is uh, we're not going to win there we're not going to get anything there so um, yeah I think Hull are going to have a bit of a field day with us to be honest. Uh, if they if they catch us on the counter if they if they look at the Birmingham performance and how they set up to play against us if they allow us to have the ball they're going to win <laughs> comfortably um, if they have the ball we might have a chance we you never know um, yeah unless we have a Millwall style defensive masterclass performance where well we don't even have Rob Dickey anymore but so that's yeah, not exactly. uh, but unless Zach Viner turns into Maldini and just kicks and clears everything away and we. <laughs> We're not getting anything. I'm so sorry. We're not going to score another goal, I don't think. Um, or it's very, very unlikely. Um, I'll go 2-0. 2-0. Yeah, I'll 
to Hull. Okay. Okay. Oh yeah. Talking about the stadium, the funniest one is the car leasing stadium. I just had Oh, to select call end it. up Ah, on Reading. the brilliant Reading one. Yeah. That always gets me. But okay, yeah. For my prediction, I don't see us scoring either. To be honest, just three shots on target is is not good at all. I do think, like you said, after the Birmingham game, they'll let us have control. We won't do anything. We'll make one chance. We might miss. Maybe we'll get a few shots, but none, none on target. Maybe one. If we're lucky, um, if the away fans can experience one shot on target, they'll go home happy. But um, Do you remember that Lee Johnson uh, period when we went on a bad run before COVID and we we just didn't score any goals and everybody was chanting shots on target. Da, da, the the whole the whole of Aston Gate. It was the one time we actually were loud and just shouting <laughs> shot on target. The one it was time. brilliant, but it was <laughs> the one time our atmosphere is actually good is when the team was absolutely awful. But brilliant. there we go. But yeah, um, I think they'll let us control the ball and I think we'll again have a high percentage possession, but I'm going to go for our first nil-nil of the season and I'm going to say no goals from either sides. We take a point, I'm taking that. go get back to BS3 and I'm taking yeah, that. I think it'll just No. be a dull game, Oh, yeah. no chances on either side and just a nil-nil. I don't want to be negative, but I just see that playing out and I don't see, we don't look like we're going to score any goals. You're being positive, mate. I'll take that. I'm taking a nil. I'm biting your hand off for a nil-nil draw. I'll take that and run. Um, but there we are. That is that is our predictions. Mine was 2-0 Hull. Um, no, you know what? You know what? I'll say 2-0 City. So if we do win 2-0, I'll say I called it. Um, so 2-0 City for me. Um, not to Bristol, but <laughs> it doesn't matter. Uh, you said nil-nil. Um and The way it's going, honestly though, now I I I won't be surprised if it's a four four thriller. <laughs> Four, Just gone four, four, just, four, goal. just score random Harry Cornick bicycle dick from everywhere. <laughs> all four goals from all four goals are from Harry Cornick long throws and just smacking it. <laughs> Brilliant.